Hey guys, this is video number five in the Guitar Keys series where we're looking at how to play all the intervals in various keys. And in this video, we're gonna focus on the key of A specifically. Though first, what does that mean? What does it mean to play in the key of A? Essentially what that means is that in music, there are 12 notes in the chromatic scale. The chromatic scale is the fundamental set of all tones that are possible to play. And one of these tones, one of these notes is the A note. And if the melodies and chords and progressions in a song gravitate towards this note, towards A, that means the song is in the key of A. A serves as the tonal center of gravity in that song. Now, on a guitar fretboard, because every string on the instrument is its own chromatic scale, the guitar is really just a set of chromatic scales that are stacked on top of each other, you can play the A note in various positions up the fretboard. Like on the open fifth string, or fret two of string three, fret five of string one, fret five of string six, or fret seven of string four, fret 10 of string two, fret 12 of string five, and fret 14 of string three. All of these different finger positions are various octaves of note A. But of course, when we play a song in the key of A, that doesn't mean that we just play the A note. That's obviously really boring and it would get old fast. So to move between these different A notes, musicians play other pitches as well. And the most common path to get from one A note to the next is a pattern called the A major scale, which is made up of notes A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. These other pitches help you navigate the fretboard as you stay within the key of A and they sound like this, moving from a low A to a high A, or moving down from a high A to a low A. Moving in either direction, A is both the starting point and the destination. And again, because of the way the strings are stacked on the guitar, we can play this same A major scale pattern in different positions up the fretboard. Like this one starting on fret seven, string four, in a higher octave. Now all of the notes on each string make up the chromatic scale, the 12 notes of music that are repeated up the frets. So every fret position on the guitar has its own note, has its own pitch. But since the A major scale is really just a subset of the chromatic scale, we're focusing on just these notes, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. And because this major scale pattern is so popular in music, it's so pleasing to the ears, musicians often label it with another set of symbols called scale degrees or numbers, where A is one, B is two, C sharp is three, and so on, like this. This pattern is made up of the same pitches, but labeled with numbers like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now that eighth note is just the high A. It's the same A note as one. So really we could say that this eight is one where the scale returns to one again like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Likewise, when we play this pattern an octave higher, it repeats through the same scale degrees like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Now these scale degree numbers are what we typically use to refer to the intervals of the major scale. Now in music, we tend to use two sets of symbols, letter names for the individual notes or pitches, and then numbers to refer to intervals and patterns like this. And all of these alphanumeric characters can get a little crazy as we refer to one set of symbols or another set of symbols or start to mix them together. Now in another video, I described the difference between letters and numbers in music. And honestly, it can be a lot to wrap your head around. So to simplify things, we're gonna use another set of symbols to clarify these patterns, and that is to use color to visualize this pattern, the major scale pattern, on the guitar fretboard, where A is an orange yellow circle in every position up the frets, and the other notes in the major scale pattern are also colorized to look like this. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one.
Now, in another video, I explained how we colorize all of these notes and all of these intervals, and it's not random. It's using a special connection between the circle of fifths, which is a special pattern in music, and the color wheel, which is a very recognizable pattern in color. And color and music perfectly mirror each other. The geometry of color perfectly matches the geometry of music. And that is what is cool because the colors do more than just help us visualize the patterns of the major scale and all other patterns in music. They actually reveal the underlying geometry that's at play in all of the intervals within a given key. And in this video, I explain how there are really just six basic patterns that form the framework of the intervals in all 12 keys. Six symmetrical geometric patterns that are consistent and easy to see with color. And when we apply these color patterns to the notes on the fretboard, all of the different interval patterns that you can play on the instrument really pop. They jump out visually, like logical, visible paths that your fingers can follow in clear and predictable ways, helping you navigate the fretboard within a given key. And in this key, in the key of A, we're gonna dissect these patterns one at a time to really get a feel for how they work. And the first interval pattern that we'll look at here is between intervals one or A, the orange yellow circle, and sharp four slash flat five, or D sharp slash E flat, the blue purple circle. Again, that's a mouthful with all of the alphanumeric characters, but really it's just two complementary colors, orange yellow and blue purple. They're polar opposites. Visually, they're as far apart from each other as they could be, and audibly they are too. In music, these complementary colors are called tritones, and they sound very dissonant together, meaning they audibly conflict. They don't sound especially good on the fretboard, but this pair of intervals helps you get your bearings because they form a very recognizable pattern on the fretboard as slanted stacks like this, and they sound like this. You can hear how awkward they sound together, right? They're dissonant as a pair of intervals. But the next pair of intervals, the next intervals that are evenly spaced around the tonic, interval one, are four and five, which are notes D, the orange square, and E, the yellow square, respectively. A, interval one, the tonic is closely connected to D, four, and E, five, because of the relationship between these notes in the circle of fifths. The visual relationship between orange, yellow, and orange, and yellow is obvious and the audible link between them is nice as well. And on the fretboard, these intervals look and sound like this. And when you look closely, an interesting pattern appears on the fretboard in the guitar's standard tuning like this, where A, interval one, is sandwiched between intervals four, D, and five, E, in any position on the instrument. For example, on the low open strings of four, five, and six, A is open five, D is the open four string, and E is the open six string. And if we go to the seventh fret, strings three, four, and five, A is played here, D is just above, same fret, but the string above, and then E is the same fret, the string below. And this pattern is consistent, like on the twelfth fret, A, D, A, E. Now, in standard tuning, because there's a shift in the top two strings, this pattern is stretched in a couple of spots. So here, on the second fret, third string, A is just above E on the same fret, fourth string, but it's a fret below D on the third fret, second string. Likewise, A on the 10th fret, second string, is just below D on the 10th fret, first string, but because of that shift in the top two strings, A is a fret above E on the ninth string, third fret. Otherwise though, this pattern is consistent in any position on the fretboard. The next pair of intervals that are evenly spaced on either side of A, the tonic, are the three, major third, C sharp, the green blue circle, and F, the flat six or minor sixth, the purple red circle. And these intervals are easy to see because they form a perfect triangle, an equilateral triangle of tertiary colors. And on the fretboard, they form stacks of notes that slant to the left like this. And in the key of A, this is what they sound like on the guitar. The next pair of intervals that are evenly spaced on either side of the tonic, interval one, are C, the flat three or minor third, the red square, and F sharp, or sixth, the major sixth, the green square. 
Now these two intervals have kind of a haunting melancholy sound because even though they're evenly spaced with A, one, and have their own special relationship with one, C and F sharp or red and green are tritones in their own right. So they're dissonant together. So while flat three and six are both friends with one, flat three and six are kind of enemies or polar opposites. And this dual affinity between the notes creates a kind of tension that you can definitely hear. And on the fretboard, this is how they appear and sound. The next pair of intervals in the key of A that are evenly spaced around the tonic, one, have a different feel altogether though. While the minor third and major sixth sound melancholy or sad, intervals two and flat seven sound downright happy. Interval two is the yellow green circle, B, and the flat seven or minor seventh is G, the red orange circle. And these two intervals are evenly spaced from A, one, by a whole step in either direction. In fact, intervals one, two, and flat seven are part of a hexagon of evenly spaced notes, like this. But in the key of A specifically, G, A, and B look and sound like this starting on the sixth string third fret. And then the last pair of intervals that are symmetrical around A, one, are the flat two, B flat, the purple square, and seven, G sharp, the blue square. And these two intervals that flank the tonic sound fairly dissonant with the tonic, one, because of their close connection to A's tritone, E flat. G sharp and B flat, both of these intervals sound more consonant with E flat because of their close connection with that note in the circle of fifths. But in the chromatic scale, they flank A. And as a result, when you move from one note to the next at half step intervals like this, the sequence sounds kind of harsh or dissonant. And these three notes are part of a 12 sided dodecagon, also known as the chromatic scale. Seriously, that is what music is, is it is geometry on steroids, a cyclical multicolor branch of audible mathematics. But in the key of A specifically, when you fade all of the other notes to focus just on these three intervals, this is how they appear up the fretboard. And they're easy to play because they rise in half step increments on the strings. And this is how they sound starting on the sixth string, fourth fret, starting at G sharp. So all of these geometric patterns form an intricate framework of notes and intervals that make up the key of A. And as you get a feel for how to move around the fretboard, following these patterns, you can really start to build different patterns in the key of A that center around A as a tonal center of gravity. So definitely practice these, get a feel for them, because you can start to build scales and melodies and chords and progressions that are based on this logic. It's not random. As you move your fingers around, they definitely follow a logic and an order. And in the key of A, this is what they look like on the fretboard. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.